One of the best things about Fear and Hunger Termina is how versatile each character is. They all have their own strengths, but you can play any way you like with them. There are definitely easier ways to start building them though, and I thought I'd cover my favourite ones for each contestant here. There's a few tips that apply to the majority of runs, so it'll be useful to cover them before getting into specific characters. The two earliest contestants you can recruit are Abella and Osar. Abella can be found immediately in the woods by the bunker, and starts with both Short Circuit to access certain doors, and Wrench Toss, which deals high damage and has a higher chance to stun whatever limit hits. Importantly, most enemies in the slums can be killed with a single Wrench Toss to the torso on easy and normal. Osar is a little more difficult to recruit, requiring the Vanushka shortcut to get him early, then navigating the woods and bunker filled with high level enemies. But if you're fast on your feet, you can make it through without getting into any fights, giving you a recruit that deals high magic damage as early as day one morning. Recruitable contestants are the best party members because you can control them in combat and give them full equipment, but there are non-controllable recruits, often referred to as auto battlers. These are the ghouls, raised through necromancy, and everybody's favourite goat, Black Caleb. Auto battlers are, in general, not very good, and only useful for meat shields. If you're playing solo, or in a situation where you can't recruit anyone else, then these are definitely better than nothing. There's some good general loot early in the game that every character benefits from, although it's not mandatory to progress. The Woodsman's House contains broken glass, which is mandatory for killing needles quickly, as well as a lot of nice general loot. You can also get the Pinecone Pig here if you have Vanushka Skin Bible and some chalk. The Mare's Manor is an excellent source of books, potentially dropping skin bibles or recipe books that can completely change your run. It also has two chests and a guaranteed leather armour, which is better than most starting armour for all early game fights. The Eastern Slums has multiple chests and looting spots, and you can get a free lucky coin and cloth fragment from the Moonscorch here, as I showed in my last video. There's also some useful guaranteed items located in the early game. The basement has some nice items, but importantly, it has a guaranteed bone saw. Bone saws can drop from tool shelves and crates, but it's random, so getting one guaranteed is pretty important. You can use it to cut off heads from defeated foes, and trade those heads to the tainted one for soulstone shards, which are required to get new skills. In the woods, there's a lot of herbs available for foraging, so make sure to poke around a bit, but in particular, there are a lot in the area east of the train. There's also a hidden stash inside the log here, so make sure to grab that. Killing the Woodsman gives you the Axe, which is a good early game weapon if your character can use it, but also his head is required for a quest in Old Town. If you take the Woodsman's head and the Priest's heads to this fellow in the slums, he'll give you a unique item, the Shield of the Four. It boosts physical and magic protection, and honestly, it's not a huge deal. But if you don't desperately need the Soulstone Shards, then it's definitely better than nothing. As for late game builds, each character has a unique start, but towards the end of each run, all the characters tend to converge a bit due to how getting skills from souls works. Now, to be clear, the power level of the player is far, far higher than enemies even in Maso mode. You absolutely do not need to take the strongest equipment or spells to beat the game. But when considering what the strongest builds actually are, then these options come up the most. For melee characters, Build variety comes more from accessories than weapons and skills, most of which you can't get early in the game and thus aren't covered by this video anyway. In short, you'll usually end up with some combination of the Meat Grinder or Red Virtue as a weapon, then Harden Heart, Small Things Amulet, Salmon Snake Room, or Leech Munger Ring as accessories. In general, magic is not useful at the start of a run until you get more skills and magic damage boosting items. Late game, however, Magic is devastating. For magic builds, Spice Forge is a mandatory skill due to supercharging your other spells, and we'll go into details about that a little later. There's actually a lot of variety in which spells to use because there's a lot of very good spells. Mischief of Rats, Black Smog, Roots That Reap, and Black Orb are all amazing spells, especially once combined with Spice Forge, but other spells can be pretty useful too, and many spells supplement builds nicely. Other skills that help magic builds are Advance and Greater Occultism from Marina, which lets you start combat with extra rev points to cast some spells faster, and of course all of Osar's skills. The items you'll usually equip for magic builds are Death Masks and the Chak Chaks, but there's a couple of other trinkets that are pretty useful too. 
There are some exploits that can be used early on, but I decided not to mention these, as there's a pretty good chance they'll be fixed in an upcoming patch. And frankly, I find it more fun to beat the game on its own terms than with exploits anyway. Now, the part you've been waiting for. The builds. Let's start with Levi. Levi is surprisingly versatile in how he can be built. You can lean into magic right from the start with him, but I find it better to focus on his physical strength. It's quite easy to change focus later on, though, if you're interested in spells or even mix and match. His first choice in character creation can give him affinity with any god or increase his match HP to 125. I recommend taking the HP increase because you can't do this at all during gameplay. The second choice is which weapon to specialize in. All these options are pretty good for their own reasons, but I find the best choice is the trench gun. Because you can get all the guns relatively quickly once you enter the city, this choice only matters in the early game. The trench gun is usually the best choice because it lets you two-shot most enemies outside of battle, and, most importantly, lets you shoot through the chains in the gate and access the city very quickly. The third choice depends entirely on which gun you picked. If you choose to go on the mission, then you'll get the skill associated with the gun for free, but as a trade-off, you become addicted to heroin, which is a permanent debuff. Because we chose the trench gun, the skill we'd get is Executioner, which literally does nothing in the current version of the game, so we're not going on the mission. The final choice is what items to bring. Never, ever choose to stock up on food for any character. You find way too much during gameplay anyway. If you find yourself taking a lot of damage, then healing items are a great choice and do help quite a bit during the early game, but usually I take extra ammo. In general, deleting an enemy from the overworld is much better than actually having to fight them. After this, the only thing you're missing now is a good melee weapon. Search the chests throughout Old Town, and if you don't get anything, fight the woodsman to take his axe. You can take him out easily with the trench gun, or recruit Abella and fight him together. After that, you're set. It's not a crazy strong start like some of the other characters have, but you're in a pretty good position to start exploring the surrounding areas much more safely than before. Marina has a pretty versatile start similarly to Levi, although she is geared more around magic. Being a magic user, her weakness is a slow start as spells require other skills and equipment to really shine. Be aware that she can't use two-handed melee weapons, but this is only really an issue late game. Her first choice is three excellent options, and honestly, it's hard to go wrong here. The best bet is to study alchemy, because the other rewards are actually easy to get later on anyway. Getting the Alchemilia books early is a very big deal, because it gives you access to recipes of healing items which will help tremendously throughout the rest of the game, and especially at the start. The next option is which god to worship. Grogroth is the best in combat, hands down. The rest have useful spells, but Grogroth is the most consistently useful spells out of all, and it's tricky to max out his affinity. The other two gods that are useful in combat are the god of fear and hunger, whose affinity is pretty easy to get, and Vanushka, where you only nearly need one or two affinity for its useful combat spells. For the final choice, if you find you usually take a lot of damage in the early game, then take medical goods, but it's almost always better to bring something to read. Skin Bibles are very valuable early to mid game, and they're entirely RNG until you reach the end. The best one you can get here is the God of Fear and Hunger Skin Bible for saving, but the Vanushka Skin Bible is good to access the woods quickly. You don't need the Grogros Skin Bible at all since you already have maximum affinity, and rares is... not very useful. And if you don't get the right book, well, don't worry. You can just reset until you get the Skin Bible you want. Eh, nobody's gonna judge you. So first thing you want to do is you want to get two soul stones, and then purchase necromancy for the ghouls and engrave. The best sigil to engrave on yourself for a magic bills is rares, as it boosts mine by 25, but you probably don't have a skin bible and you won't be able to do this for a little while, so just leave it. For your ghouls, the Olmir sigil is the best option, as it will reduce physical damage taken, which is the majority of damage throughout a playthrough. Now, if you want to do something pretty interesting with Marina, and you have a Vanushka Skin Bible, then you can attempt to kill Osar early to get Spice Forge. The trip to find him is pretty dangerous, and fighting him is even worse, but his skills are mandatory for magic builds, so you'll have to do this at some point. If you want to attempt this, then instead of getting Necromancy and Engrave, take Hurting and Black Smog from Grogoroth instead. Hurting isn't super useful, but it's required to get Black Smog, which is incredibly useful. It's used to blind enemies and make fights much easier. 
Osar deals a lot of damage, so it's important to mitigate that quickly. After he's blinded, take out his limbs to stop him casting, because there's still a chance of a lucky hit, and then kill him. Alternatively, have party members attack his body while you focus on blinding. Just remember that contestant party members won't join in fights against other contestants until they're hit by an attack, but Osar will cast AoE spells. All of Osar's skills are incredibly useful for magic builds, but just like before, it's recommended to take necromancy after this so you have meat shields to mitigate early damage, because magic itself takes a little while to actually start being worth casting. Dan's skills are more useful mid to late game than early, and he really shines as a supporting character with a party, but he can still do some pretty interesting things. His skill Analyze is one of the strongest in the game, which lets you beat most enemies in two turns, although it doesn't work at all against some later fights, like some of the Moon Scorch bosses. His skills Diagnosis and Precision Stance aren't useful whatsoever in gameplay, but the rest can be quite helpful. For the first choice, pick Honest Work, then pick Continue with the Studies. This will give you Analyze. It makes the target's weak spot available to hit, allowing you to burn down most targets quickly. With a party or heavy hitting attacks, this skill is undoubtedly one of the best in the game. Next, pick Join as a Medic. This will give you a light blue vial, pep pills, and a scalpel. Pep pills are a consumable that double your agility, which usually gives you double turns in all fights, and the scalpel is a really good melee weapon to start with. For the final option, pick Medical Goods. As said before, food and alcohol are very common, but healing is limited early game, and it stays useful throughout. Dan starts with a stronger melee weapon than a knife, the scalpel, but you'll still want to find something better soon, such as the Woodsman's Axe or Villager's Rusty Pipe. After recruiting a Bella, you'll want to collect enough heads for two Soul Stones quickly in order to get Dan's skill, Medicinal and Organ Harvest, which is two skills in one. This will allow you to harvest organs from corpses that are used to heal the worst status effects outside of battle, meaning you'll never need curative items again. Using Analyze in combat with heavy attacks or teammates means that every early fight, even against tough enemies, will be over very quickly, and the extra healing items and organs will help mitigate extra damage. Dan builds very well into melee because of Analyze, and he has very high survivability long term due to Organ Harvest. Now for Abella, who has one of the best starts out of all the contestants. Wrench Toss can one-shot most enemies in the early game, and she can start with an ability that gives her access to THE best weapon in the game for later. First, choose to learn Mechanics, which gives you Wrench Toss. This one ability will carry you through the early game, and stays useful until the second last fight in each ending. It deals high damage and stuns whatever limb you hit. It will kill all the villagers and Moonscorch early game, and can shut down dangerous limbs in harder fights. Keep in mind that you need to re-equip your wrench before you can throw it again, so it's safest to use this as part of a party. Second, choose to take the man back home. This gives you the Officer Sword, a strong melee weapon by itself, but it's part of a recipe for an excellent weapon a Bella can craft very early. Third, choose Weapon Craft. This allows you to craft excellent weapons, including the best weapon in the game. I'll explain how we're going to use it shortly, but make no mistake, this is an almost mandatory skill for melee builds. Finally, choose to stuck up on spare parts. Doing this will allow you to craft a weapon very quickly, and help mitigate the RNG of finding parts for weapons. Unfortunately, since you're playing as a Bella, you can't immediately recruit a Bella, so she is a little weaker than some other characters because of this. But we're going to visit her bunker straight away anyway. I recommend killing Chinaka now so you can get his soul for the stats later, but I don't blame you if you can't bring yourself to hurt him. Since we're going into the bunker though, Needles will do the job for you, so... It's him or you. Stop off at the woodsman's house and grab the glass on the ground. Then go to the bunker and search the shelves for any scrap metal and extra glass. You're going to fight Needles, and first turn, you need to blind him. If it fails, then second turn, try again. Even when he's blinded, he can still hit you, so keep your health topped off if you can, but RNG can still kill you here, so you may need a couple of tries. Once Needles is dead, take the heroin from his body and craft the Sandman. You now have access to one of the two methods of poisoning enemies in the game, so enjoy your free dot damage. The extra heroin will come in handy for later boss fights too. Between Wrench Toss and the Sandman, you get the strongest start in the game, so have fun. Osar the Yellow Mage's opening is quite unique in that it's a full text adventure. I won't be covering that full one here, but I do recommend trying it out at least once, it's pretty fun. Instead, I'll cover what options you should pick if you choose the abridged version, which is similar to the standard openings. 
As a bonus, if you play either of Osar's openings, you'll get an extra 25 plus max HP, giving him excellent survivability. Osar has a very strong start, but he lacks the ability to use guns whatsoever, which hurts him quite a bit in the mid and late game. For the first option, you want to take the family Chak Chak, because the alternative, a Soul Stone, isn't very hard to come by while playing, but Chak Chaks are pretty limited and very, very useful for boosting magic damage. Next, learn methods of your home country to get Meditation. This gives you extra rev points when you guard, allowing you to deal more damage and cast spells faster. The option to get God Affinity here isn't super useful since it's just a single point, and the final option, Pyromancy Trick, isn't really useful for Osar at the start of the game. For the next choice, learn Basic Techniques. This gives you La Dance Macabre, which boosts your magic damage the longer a fight goes on. It's vital for late game magic builds, so it's worth getting now for free, and frankly, the animation is hilarious. After this, take Skin Bible Grogoroth, because the other two options, Rare and Sylvian, are mostly for utility. Grogoroth is for damage, and we want to do a lot of damage. Next, take the Officer Sword. It deals a tiny amount less damage than the spear, but since it's one-handed, it's safer long-term in case you lose an arm, and can be given to more party members. For the final choice, I would have usually said take healing goods, but while recording this playthrough as Osar, I found my mind draining very quickly, and depending on RNG, you can easily get in a situation where you don't have enough mind healing items. So you should pick stock up on magical goods. This gives you three mind healing items, which can definitely help mitigate the heavy mind costs early in the game. To play Osar is pretty simple. You need heads. Lots of heads. So recruit a Bella and start clearing out every enemy in Old Town you can manage. Draw a Vanushka Sigil in the Woodsman's House to get one affinity when you get the Skin Bible, and pick up Pinecone Pick from the tree to get a trickle of free items over the game. Pinecone Pick won't make or break a run, but it is pretty cute. With these affinity levels, the order you want to spend your Soul Stones is Spice Forge from Osar's Soul, Necromancy from Grogoroth if you want ghouls, then Roots that Reap from Vanushka, and finally Hurting. Spice Forge is a ridiculously strong spell system that unlocks new variations of other spells. Red Spice doubles the spell so it gets used twice, and it does usually increase the mind cost. White Spice makes a spell get automatically used at the start of combat before any turns take place. You still pay the mind cost, but it doesn't cost any rev points. And finally, Blue Spice means greater spells, which lowers the mind cost drastically. This is really good for expensive spells like Chains of Torment or Scorched Earth. You can immediately see how strong Spice Forge is for magic builds. Using White Spice on Roots That Reap means you have a good chance to finish most basic fights before they even start. Late game, using Double Black Orb is obscenely strong. You can also change the spices around whenever you like outside of combat. When you enter the city, you should beeline for the church to pick up the guaranteed Beetle Stone to help with the heavy mine costs. After getting this set up, you're ready to handle everything the game throws at you for a long while. Now, our favourite botanist has a rough start no matter how you build her. She's designed to be a support character, but if you take the right skills, you can absolutely nuke bosses. Against easier foes though, she can struggle a bit. She can get knocked out of her chair whenever she takes damage, and can't attack again until she gets back in, so having some magic can help mitigate this risk. And, like Marina, she can't use two-handed weapons. To begin with, stick to botanism. This will give you undergrowth awareness, which lets you pick up extra plants. These extras are incredibly useful later on, and have unique effects like healing over time. Next, concentrate on your studies to get advanced botanism, which unlocks the best healing recipes in the game. The dark blue mixed herbs give a healing effect which lasts multiple turns, and condensed herbs will fully heal you or protect you from most status effects. Because Olivia has a very weak start, it's best to specialise in Folklore next to get a Vanushka Skin Bible. This allows you to get Pyromancy Trick or Roots That Reap quickly, in case you need to finish off an enemy that's just knocked you out of your chair, as you can still cast spells. Finally, get something to read. This will give you Alchemilia Volume 1, giving you the basic healing recipes. These are useful because the stronger healing recipes you've already unlocked are often too strong, and you can end up wasting resources. If you only need to heal 30 to 50 HP, then it's often best to use a blue vial rather than waste condensed herbs. Olivia struggles a lot in early combat, so if you're playing solo, it's often best to just avoid as much as possible. Otherwise, recruit Abella and grab enough heads for 3 soul stones. 
The important skills to buy here are Poison Tip and Toxicology from Olivia's skill tree, and Pyromancy Trick from Vanushka's. I recommend killing the Woodsman and drawing the Vanushka sigil in his basement, but you probably need a Bella's help to kill him quickly. Not only do you get the Vanushka affinity here, but you also get Pinecone Pig, which has a chance to pick up herbs for your new recipes. Poison Tip will allow you to coat your weapons in poison to deal extra dot damage during fights, which is more useful against stronger enemies than weaker ones. Toxicology allows you to craft Condensed Nettle, which can do an effect similar to Stun on the target, and Condensed Hemlock, which is without a doubt the strongest dot in the game. It deals 15% of the enemy's max HP every single turn, meaning no enemy will live longer than 7 turns, although it'll often kill them much faster. It's very, very strong. Pyromancy Trick is a cheap spell that deals a little damage, but can also apply a burn dot. Poison and burn dots stack together very nicely against medium and large enemies, and the raw damage of Pyromancy Trick can be used in place of a melee attack in case Olivia gets knocked out of her chair. In general, you have to play a little more carefully with Olivia than the rest due to her wheelchair, but she absolutely deletes bosses with condensed hemlock, poison, and burn stacking, and having an immediate access to great healing gives her excellent survivability. Marco is just straight up the strongest melee character in the game. His fists outpace every weapon you'll get early to mid game outside of rushing the meat grinder, which ironically he can get earlier than everybody else. So let's get it. First, become a pickpocket. This lets you steal items from most enemies, which we'll be using for something very specific soon. Next, pick to train stamina. This gives you an extra 25 HP which can't be obtained later unlike the rest which are just stat increases. For the next choice, there's multiple good options. For what we're doing today, take Evasion, which gives you Bob and Weave. It's best to start with this because there's a rough fight early on and the Evasion bonus will help us survive. Next, get your sister and flee the country. You'll learn Escape Plan, which makes it much easier to run from fights. This is useful throughout the game because in Fear and Hunger, sometimes you shouldn't be fighting things. Finally, take Luxury Products. This will give you heroin and pep pills, which are somewhat rare consumables that are very useful for tougher fights, especially the final fights in each ending. So, first things first, we need to fight Abella. Head to the bunker and start the fight, but make sure to steal from her during it to get the bench grinder. She's very tough because she can stun you for three turns with wrench toss, so if you're struggling in this fight, use the pep pills beforehand and bob and weave to have a high chance to avoid her attacks. After this, Loot every shelf you can find in the bunker for crafting materials. To craft the meat grinder, you'll need one duct tape, a saw blade, and a scrap metal. After this, get 12 heads to trade for soul stones to buy Abella's skill, weapon crafting. Then, craft the meat grinder. Congratulations! You now have objectively the best weapon in the entire game, and it only took one kill to get it. Uh, plus 12 or so heads. If you had bad RNG and didn't get the required materials in the first bunker, you can just reset and try again. Or just wait until you reach another bunker to search for them there. Karen normally has a very weak start. Her skills are useful in conjunction with other souls, but altogether they don't help her very much in the early game. However, there is one cheeky strategy courtesy of my friend A Dark Raccoon that gives her a very impressive start. For all the other characters, it's better to go through their backstory, but for Karen, just skip. You'll start with Persuade, which gives you extra options when talking in combat, Escape Plan, which lets you run from fights more easily, and a Pistol, with 6 rounds. First, leave the train and change screens so everybody else at the train moves around. Then come back, equip your Pistol, and attack Marco. Use Talk and persuade him to stand down. Then use Guard until you have 3 Rev Points. Rev up and shoot his torso. If you use Maximum Rev and attack with a gun, it shoots twice but only uses one bullet. Marco has to be taken out first because otherwise he'll tie you up and you'll be stuck at the train until day 3. Next, attack Marina. Like before, persuade and buy yourself an extra turn, but attack her arms first, then rev up and attack her torso. Be careful because Marina can cast Black Smog and blind you, so if you're unlucky here you might need to reset. After Marina's dealt with, change weapons to the knife because you won't need your pistol against Olivia. Persuade, then attack her arm with one rev twice in a row, then attack her head. Loot them all and use the mixed herbs to heal up, then sleep on the bench. When you wake up, Tanaka will be very unhappy, so it's time to kill him too. Like with Marco, 
persuade, then guard, until you have three rev and attack his torso. And just like that, you've got four more souls, a soul stone, an Alchemilia Volume 1 in the first five minutes. Other characters struggled to do this because of the large amount of damage that the other contests put out, so Persuade and the Pistol really help here. The skills I recommend taking first are Engrave, Lockpicking, and Diplomacy. Lockpicking isn't mandatory, but there's lots of storage rooms and loot hidden behind locked doors, including a rifle just outside the Mayor's Manor, and you can get into the sewers for free quite quickly. Diplomacy is a bit of a controversial pick, but I really like it because it allows you to kill bobbies in a single turn without taking damage, and it's controversial because outside of that, it's not really useful. Honestly, you can start building Karen any way you like after this, seeing as you've got the best melee damage soul and a really solid magic damage soul too. Hopefully you'll find these builds useful for your next playthrough. One of my favourite things about this game is how versatile all the characters are, so even though I think these are the strongest ways to start each character, they're far from the only ways to do it. But I'd like to know, who's your favourite character and did you like their build here? How would you do it differently? My name is Morday Duke and thank you very much for watching.